it's different when you, as a kid, you imagine yourself being on these different platforms and doing the things that you like to do. And it's in real 3D HD lifetime. Like, it's real. Like, right now, sitting right here, I, I can't believe I'm, like, really sitting right here and we're doing, we're in rotation. Like, this is in crazy Brooklyn. to me. In and Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. in Brooklyn at that is, like, crazy to me. Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Rob Markman, the host of Amazon Music's Rap Rotation in DJ Mode. And I got a very special guest. Look, I'm a Brooklyn baby. It's about to get real big <laughs> Brooklyn uh, uh, in here, uh, big Brooklyn energy. Um, She got just one of the hottest records in hip-hop right now. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Come on, baby. Don't play with it. Come on, Miss Lola Brooke, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. How you doing? First of all, we are in Brooklyn. Let's, let's let it be known because yeah. I, I feel like you're starring, your celebrity has taken you other places, you're doing interviews all over the place, but we home, we in Brooklyn we right now. We in Brooklyn right now, the okay. stomping ground. Nah, it, it's super dope, and congratulations on all of your success. Thank you. The new deal that you signed with Arista, we're going to get into all of your business, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? But I, I, I just really want to learn more about you, and I know the fans do too. Okay. So can we do that? That's cool? Yeah, of course. Yeah, let's go. Cool. Um, First, I... I saw somewhere that you started rapping around the age of eight or you started mm -hmm. dabbling in poetry. Mm -hmm. Is that that's accurate? That's how you know. You, know, you, know, you did I'm your a, homework. Listen, it's my, it's my business to get in your business. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was rapping at a good seven, eight years old. But um, it's crazy because I remember telling my grandmother, well, I remember my grandmother telling me that I told her that I was going to be a rapper. Don't remember saying that, though, but I told her I was going to be a rapper. I done tapped into poetry. I always kept journals. I was a diary girl. So even if it wasn't poetry or, or me rapping, I was just always writing about my day, like how my day went. Is that still part of your... Because different people approach music differently, right? A lot of people get in the booth and just vibe. Some people write. Um... Is writing still a part of your process when you create? Of course, yes. I'm a writer, first thing. But lately, I've been just going in the booth, punching in. Okay. Like, you know, after a while, when you do it for a long period of time, you start to get comfortable. Uh, you know who you are as an artist. So I'm a writer, but most likely, it's already in my head. Mm. But sometimes when I tell people that I'm writing, I'm not physically writing with a pen or in my phone, in my notes. I'm, like, reciting an eight bar or 12 bar verse in my head back to back to back to back to back and then move on and it'll always stay, stay there. That's dope. So you got a dope memory too. Yeah, um, I'm, it's, 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 it's working on it. It's cool. It's cute for right now. Do you ever be somewhere and you might come up with like four bars and be like, yo, I got to write this down before oh, yeah. I lose it? Every day. I'll be like, I'll say something slick and I'll be like, oh, let me write that down. And then that'll help you start off your verse, start off a song. Right. Nah, that's dope. All right, so at eight years old, I'm wondering, um, who who were you around? Like, who was inspiring? Was there somebody in your family who was playing hip-hop, or was this something that you was hearing on the radio or seeing on the TV? Like, what, what kind of sparked the rap ambition in you? I always tell people the first time that I've ever fell in love with hip-hop was 50 Cent, his Wankster mm. um, music video. That's what really started it off. That's what made me say... This is a rapper. Uh, this is a New York rapper. Not just rapper. This is a New York rapper. And he's just not a rapper. He's an entertainer as well. Because 50 always has something about him that was just like a spark of him being himself. So. Right. Now, that was an amazing time in hip-hop. That's, that's a good first. Yeah. like You, you know, because I be, I be feeling bad for, for some people in certain areas, like, mm -hmm. What their introduction is, is like, ah, you can't, oh. you came at a whack time. Like, you can't, oh, it wasn't that high. You, you, you landed at mm -hmm. a good era right there, man. That's dope. But, yeah, 50 is the GOAT, man. Like, mm. Do you ever think about, a, a, and it could be a boy or a girl, young boy or girl, just somebody wanting to rap, a young artist right now who's sitting at home watching Don't Play With It, being like, yo, that's what I want to do. Has that ever crossed your mind that you're already inspiring people, maybe the way that 50 inspired you? Uh, what today is? Tuesday. Can I say today? Yeah, today is Tuesday. Tuesday. Just about Sunday, I went to 
one of my teammates' baby shower. Shout out to Sha, Shauna. She's having a little girl, but she already has a little girl right now. So she ran up to me and was like, Lola, Lola, I want to be like you when I grow up. And I was like, no, 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 no. You're going to be better than me. She was like, no, I want to be like you. And then that moment right there, I was like, oh, my God. If she's saying this, I can only imagine how many other little girls is looking up to me. I got to figure this out. I got to, I don't know. It can't just be about rap, man. It has to be something else. I have to be given more than just music. That's all. But but let it let it come in time. And, and I say that to say, um, and, and, you know, um, what's the saying? Comparison is the thief of joy. It's not to compare or to do nothing like that. But if we talk about 50 Cent Wangster, that dropped even before Get Rich or Die Trying. Like, what I'm saying is that was early in his career. Like, yeah. 50 Cent grew so much from Wangster, you know, I think. And obviously, you've had records before Don't Play With It. But for most of the audience, this is the introduction. This is the moment. And it's going to grow from there. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so, so definitely give yourself some grace because, you know, it's going to open up other opportunities. Right. Now, you did a, a, a freestyle to Easy E, Boys in the Hood, back in the day. Where you, where you get that from? Listen, it's my business to be in your business. <laughs> I, like, I don't even think I said that, like, a good, what? You well, know what I mean? I did, yes, I did, yeah. It was like a flashback. I, I, I know I can't be mistaken. His son... Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't I don't want to say I don't want to say it was his son and it wasn't, but I think they had uh, relaunched or they put out a video to the record. Got I'm, you. I'm not too sure, but I remember being a, a little a little girl watching TV and it came up, and I was like, this beat is type cool. It was in down the street in my six. I was like, this beat type yeah. cool, and I and I had wrote a little rhyme to it. That's how, okay. So that was gonna be my question. That's dope because yeah, his son Lil Easy did relaunch. His career and, and and started dabbling in, in but rap. This, but was it? But this was like really long ago. Yeah, it might might have been like oh eight. I can't really remember. I was nine. I was really young. I yeah. probably was like nine or ten or something. But but that that was gonna be my question to you because I boys in the hood like, and you know we don't gotta talk about ages here. I'm definitely not gonna talk about mine. <laughs> But I was like six or seven when that came out, so I know. So, I, so it made me think, like, damn, where did you get the inspiration to do that? But it, it makes sense out. that it was a remake. It, yeah, it was like I wasn't born me. when. I, no, I know yeah, that. Yeah, I we know that. Know. We know that. But, but it was a relaunch because I, re, I, I remember saying to myself, like, I, I didn't know the song. I'm like, I don't know the mm -hmm. song. This song right. is new. Who's Easy right. E that's and stuff hard. like that? And then that's when I was like, oh, okay. It might have been like a memorial video right. or something. I can't really remember, but I do remember the beat, and I had cut it. That's hard. That's super hard. Yeah, and it was like really bad. So, I doubt that. Yeah, really the verse bad? was like garbage. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was bad. Like I, I, don't, I don't know. We everybody got to start somewhere. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's about where you are right now. Um, you got this style to you, which I love. Like. Like it's just big Brooklyn energy. Like if I had to describe it, it's big Brooklyn energy. It's it's an aggression, but it's a slickness. It's a wittiness. Um, how did you develop your style, or, or did it come right away, or is it something that had to evolve over time for you? No, it was always in me. It, I just had a a hard time really showing it to the public because the public it was the same people in the public telling me that it wasn't gonna work. So I was scared to be myself. Sometimes, and I was scared to just show who I really was because before I even really get to do so, they was already saying, oh, Lo, you're too aggressive. You're too this. You're too that. It's not going to work. She needs to sell sex more. Uh, it's, it's all that. So so you felt like you were being pressured to fit into a certain box, a certain yeah. mold. Yeah, like I was feeling pressured to be something that I wasn't. And it's crazy because as an artist, you don't want to be that artist that is a problem and mm. you try to try things and you don't want to be a know-it-all. But if you know, you just know. So so when, when was the moment that you were able to find that confidence and be like, listen, God, I tried it your way. I hear what you're saying, but this is me. And if we move forward, this is how I, I got to do it. I did the song Options and I brought it to my team and I was like, yo, this is me. 
And it was like, okay, well, that's all right. And then when they showcased it to the to other people, it was the same thing. Like, oh yeah, but she need to be more melodic, and she need to do this, and eh, we know she could rap, but what else could she do? And then it just was like they was like, yo, look, listen, we don't care what the people say. If this is what you want to do, it feel good. We like it. Do you? When by the time you get to don't play with it, and I know we're skipping around because I know a whole lot came yeah. before that. Mm -hmm. um, Twenty twenty one, the record was released. And, and it's reaching its peaks now. Like, and, and we probably still haven't seen the peak of the record. There's so much more to go. And I think it's a great story because I, I think so often in this era, artists are asked to continually turn out music, continually churn out content. Don't stop, don't stop. Mm -hmm. But there's also an importance not to give up on a record, to right. continue working a record, to being like, yo, I believe in this record, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't happen tomorrow, we keep working until it happens because right. I believe in it. Can you talk about the trajectory of Don't Play With It and, and, and the confidence to stick with it? See, the thing with me was I never let go of Don't Play With It, but I didn't hang on to it. Because as an artist, when you make music, you still have to continue to keep making music so that you can feed your audience. So, of course, I still was promoting Don't Play With It, but I was still making more music as well and saying, yo, listen to this and promoting other music as well. But for some reason, I did find myself always promoting Don't Play With It more than any other song that I was dropping or or drop. So We talk, we talk about this confidence that, that you have, and I, I love that you have the confidence to be yourself. You know, you made a couple of references on a couple of tracks, right? But um, obviously on Don't Play With It, you say, you know, you talk about the 100 bands. I don't even got 100 bands. Got me 100 bands. You know, then you came back on Here I Come and said, still ain't got 100 bands. Still ain't got 100 bands. Um, where, where is the confidence for that? Because I think also we're in this era where a lot of times for the first time we might see an artist, they pop out. They have the biggest chain already. They got the jewelry. They got the cash. And there's nothing to grow to. And what's different about you, I'm, I'm like, yo, she's been saying, yo, I ain't got the 100 bands. But and you wasn't afraid to say that. A yeah. lot of people, even if they had it, might have fronted. Um, where's that confidence come from to just be like yourself on that? You know what I mean? See, the confidence was within me. The confidence came from my upbringing, my household. My mom is a single parent. I used to think that she had it until I got older and I realized, oh, we really were struggling this whole time. And on top of that, she still keep me, the maintenance is high quality. I still look, I still look up the part. I still look good. I still look polished. I don't look like nobody at home is, is loving me the right way. So I was like, I don't, I don't care to let the people know that I don't got it. Because when I do got it, I damn sure don't want them to know I got it. So <laughs> why, like, it's the thing with this is be yourself. Be yourself because if you go outside and you portray some someone that you're not, you're gonna have to keep maintaining it, and it gets hard. Imagine me telling you I got hundred bands when I really don't have a hundred bands, and then every time you see me, you expect these things. You expect designer on me all the time. You expect me to be in a nice car. You expect me to eat five star uh um restaurant uh plates and so far on and jewelry and sometimes my hair might be messed up. I need you to know I'm just having a bad day. I don't need you to think that I'm, every time you see me, I'm going to be polished because I'm not perfect. Yes, I'm an artist. Yes, I might be able to take care of my family. But when you see me come outside and I have an off day, just know that I'm human. And that's what I wanted the people to know. I'm not perfect. That's so That's so dope. And, and, and it's refreshing. And, and I think people will relate to that. I think you're mm -hmm. going to find that more people yeah. realize that they like that. It's a lot of rappers than, that's broke. Oh, just, listen. I ain't want to say I was trying to find a nice way to say it. No, but there's a yeah. lot of smoke and mirrors. It's yeah. a lot of look on the gram. We always put our best self. Right. You know, you always post the wins. You never post the losses. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that's not reality because nope. everybody takes a loss. Everybody, everybody takes goes through it. Now nah, that's dope. Um, your new single just relax. Yeah. Come on, man. You sampled the classic Black Sheep. The choice is yours. Um. Who's idea with that? How did how, just tell me how creatively that came together? Well, my producer, Reefa Music, he came up with the whole creative idea um, behind the production. He just brought it to me and was like, "Hey, you messing with it?" And I was like, 
I'm messing with it. But I knew he already told me the history to it, so I did kind of get scared because I'm like, uh, I cannot mess a classic up, <laughs> like you know. And then the older generation is a little tough on the younger generation. It's like you got to do your homework. Yeah. It's like you got to know, you got to know your research. So I was like, all right, if I get in the studio and do my thing. Thank God. But if I don't, do not let nobody hear it. And then I just went in and the people love it. You absolutely did your thing. It's a dope record. You did um you did not mess up a classic. <laughs> you added on. And I think it's dope. And it's true. We talk about this generational divide in hip hop, yeah. right? And and you know, this year is, is hip hop's fiftieth anniversary. Mm-hmm. And I think the conversation needs to more happen where the older generation needs to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> And let y'all have it, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it is intimidating sometimes. Yeah. yeah, but but also have the conversation. So like, do your history, do your homework, but do you? But you do know what you? I'm saying? Right, so, right. So now nah, you absolutely did down the record. You did it justice. Um, it's amazing, and I think what it's actually going to do is, is is help a lot of the younger generation go back and it, be like, oh, that's where it came from. Yes, I like to study the greats, so. Who, who else do you study? We know 50 is one. Is there, is there anybody Little else? Little Wayne, Meek Mills. Those are my top three. Hard. Like those, that's, they're in my timeline. It was 50, Little Wayne, then Meek. Okay. You did in the Millie freestyle, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I was supposed to record it, but uh, we ended up not recording it. It's crazy because when I had wrote my verse, it was two other females that wrote a verse too. And I, we was just, you know, rapping it to each other before we went to the studio. I rapped my verse. One of the girls was like, that's whack. This, she, what she said? I think she said, that's whack. This how mine's going. I was like, whack. Yeah, like, I ain't even. In my head, I'm like, I really want to be a rapper. I probably never, like, said it as, like, as much loud mm-hmm. to, to the public, but... I'm like, girl, you just boy. Like, man, get out of here. Well, look at me now, sis. Mm, I mean, <laughs> listen. You know, don't lie. Um, so so she she hasn't gone on. She she didn't continue her rap career maybe stopped right there at a milli. I don't even she <laughs> yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I don't even know. Listen, where. listen it ain't no for hard everybody. Feelings. It ain't for everybody. Appreciate you. It ain't for everybody. Um <laughs> Congratulations on the new deal with Arista. Um, super happy for you. What's been the biggest change in your life so far since signing the deal? Like, what's what's been the thing that you noticed right away? Like, oh, this is different. Uh, what I can say is, uh, the only difference is that it just was more added on to my team. Like, the energy is bigger, the love is bigger, and everything. Because um, the team that I came from, they catered to me a lot. So now that I'm with Arista, Arista is like catering to like us. So okay. now it's it's not that much of a difference because at the end of the day, as the artist, I have to make sure I follow up and work. They can't give no they can't find anything for me to do if I don't show up. It's all in my hands at the same time. Regardless of what they could do and the opportunities they, that they could give to me, I still have to show up as an artist. Mm. So shout out to Arista. It was dope to see the footage of you. Um at the future concert at Barclays, coming out again, big Brooklyn energy. Big Brooklyn, 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 Brooklyn. Yes, shout outs to Pluto for bringing me out to the Barclays. My first appearance at the Barclays for a, a real concert because I I did the Nets basketball game halftime. Yeah, yeah, halftime. But this was Pluto bringing me out. On his concert, it's a, it's on a his diff- stage. It's a different energy. It's a yeah, different. Yeah, it's a different energy. People are there for music, not for basketball. Right. It's just different. What What was it like? Because a key moment in that, and the record rang off, but a key moment of that, when we talk about you being a writer, right, you being a lyricist in, in that way, is that you spit the record a cappella, and 18,000 people are spitting it right back at you. Can you describe that feeling? of the call and response that happened with no music. There was no beat. It was just the lyrics. Oh, it's a feeling that you can't describe. It's like, I always told my team, I feel it when I go to an arena 
and the whole arena sang my lyrics a cappella. And then it happened, and I still was like, I don't feel it yet, because it's so unbelievable. I'm like, no, no way. Like, I was right this whole time. So this whole time, I was really going to be great. This whole time, I was really going to, like, flourish as an artist. Is this real? No way. Like, I got what I want. I got what I want. It's different when you, as a kid, you imagine yourself being on these different platforms and doing the things that you like to do. And it's in real 3D, HD, lifetime. Like, it's real. Like, right now, sitting right here, I can't believe I'm, like, really sitting right here and we're doing, we're in rotation. Like, this is in crazy Brooklyn. to me. In Brooklyn, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn at that, it's, like, crazy to me. What can you tell me about your upcoming project? I know, I know you're cooking up something. What can you I, listen? And I, I don't need you to give away all the secrets. But we're in Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. You're from Brooklyn. That is but, not but, gonna work. <laughs> I, I, I bet you it work. Come on, no. Brooklyn. You gonna front on Brooklyn? No. no. Oh. oh no. 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 What's one of the rules? Spread love is the Brooklyn way. Spread, Come on. Spread love is the Brooklyn way. So I'm gonna <laughs> spread love throughout the whole 2023 because that project is definitely definitely dropping in 2023. You thought you was gonna catch me there. But you didn't catch me there. Almost had it. Look, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to let it go. So now, with that in mind, right? Signs your first major label deal. Things are taking off. It feels like every day you're reaching a new level, conquering a new milestone. Um, what kind of career do you want to carve out for yourself? Five years from now, ten years from now, where do you want to be? I want to be on a big screen. I want to be an actress. And I think I'm about to get go back into drawing okay yeah i say i am hopefully i will but i don't even put too much pressure on me whatever yeah like today i might feel a way about something tomorrow i might feel different about it so i just want to make sure i'm wealthy i'm healthy and that's it and everything else is fall in line but i can't be able to do the things i would like to do if i'm not healthy Probably not wealthy. I need to be healthy though. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be wealthy, but I would like to. No, nah, no, nah, we didn't. You deserve this wealth. Yeah, you deserve I deserve these the bags. wealth. So, yeah, most likely just entertainment. Period. Like I like to entertain people. I like for people to smile. I like to make them feel good, even if I'm having a bad day. Well, Lola, I'm, I'm gonna say I feel good about this interview. Uh, Again, it's big Brooklyn energy. You do. You have an energy that's infectious. And I wish you all the success in your career. Thank you. I, I, hopefully, we can come back and do this later in the year, yeah. next year, and each as it's, your career progresses, we could do a check-in. Of course, of course. I'm listen. I'm here, Brooklyn, 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 right? Big Brooklyn energy. Come on. Oh, I. Right. But listen, y'all ain't gotta wait for that. You know what I mean? It's right here for y'all on Rat Rotation, so you could check in. You know, we got all of Lola's latest music in rotation, so you can check me out, Rat Rotation Radio. In DJ mode on Amazon Music, and you could check Lola out at the Barclays Center. Uh, um, well, I'm gonna be at the Madison Square Garden. Madison soon. Square Garden. Look, I'm I'm, put, I'm I'm putting my name on that. Well, it's Jimmy Fallon. Y'all Jimmy need to book her. Ooh, book me, um, hey Jimmy. Um, VMAs happening this year. VMA Awards. Like we just gonna speak all BET Hip Hop Awards. We need oh, to speak all of this into existence. Just Grammys. just just open your eyes and you're gonna see Lola Brooke. Grammys for my granny. <laughs> and there you have it. We out. Hey, for more exclusive artist interviews, check out DJ Mode on Amazon Music, including my station, Rat Rotation Radio, where we bring you the stories behind your favorite hip-hop joints.